Hey guys, what's going on? I'm reading from Matthew chapter 5, the Sermon on the Mount, and it's called the Beatitudes, and let's read it all the way through, and then I'm going to go and land on verse 5. Blessed are the gentle. We're going to talk about gentleness. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. He opened his mouth and began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the gentle, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Blessed are those who have been persecuted for the sake of, the, of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you and persecute you and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for re your reward in heaven is great. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Wow. Jesus brings some deep kingdom truths to the table here. And we enter in with humility. We enter in with contrition and penitence. And we live a life of gentleness. King David said, your gentleness has made me great. And there's an inheritance of the earth. There's a power. I watch parents discipline their kids and maintain an even keel. There's power in that gentleness because the children are watching uh, a parent exert discipline when needed in the life of the young person in their development. And the tone of it, though, is uh, it might be thunderous, but it's a velvet hand. Uh, and it's in order to develop their character so they'll self-discipline. And, and gentleness is humble. It's meek. And, I, and I'm, I mean, I think about these characteristics of Jesus in um, Matthew chapter 11, later on in the same book, he invites people, he says, come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden. Now he's speaking to observant Jewish people that are desperately trying to abide by the law of Moses, the covenant of Abraham, and the, 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 the obligations and responsibilities that go with being subservient to him. And Jesus comes in the scene and he says, I'm going to give you rest. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Now listen to this. This is amazing. I am gentle and humble in heart. Now in Revelation, he's called the, he's called the lamb slain before the foundations of the world in the Gospels. In Revelation, he's called, there's something called the wrath of the lamb. So there there's a totality to Jesus. He's the king of kings. He's the alpha and the omega. He transcends time and space. All this quantum physics came from him. All the material world came from him. All the intellect and amazingness of the human mind came from him. And uh, God is spirit. And those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. And these spiritual truths here, particularly this one. He says, I am gentle and humble of heart. Um, it's not lulling us into passivity. It's important that we understand that what's being said here, there, there's, there's a power in graciousness. There's a power in being merciful, as it says in just a couple of verses. There's a, there's a power in humility. 
Uh, there's also power in pride. You know, uh, people exert themselves pridefully in the world and you, you, you see them make gains. That's why the Bible says don't be envious of wrongdoers. You know, they'll wither quickly like the grass. What is a profit to gain the whole world and lose your own soul? No, this is deep stuff here. And I'm not going to pretend to, you know, completely thoroughly address it. But Jesus opens up the subject in this powerful sentence. Blessed are the gentle, for they shall inherit the earth. You would think you know, blessed are those who exert themselves, who, who are pushy, who are domineering. No, there's a blessing on obedience, and there's a blessing on faith. There's a blessing on meditating on the word day and night. There's a blessing on being compliant with Jesus that is without parallel. And it's radical. You know, Jesus isn't pretending here that... <laughs> Because he said, my kingdom is not of this world. So a worldly mindset looks at this and just scoffs or dismisses it, doesn't get it. But if you understand it, there's a power. And I'll get practical. A soft tongue breaks a bone, even in a conversation. Uh, if you can learn to stay calm, cool, and collected, um, there's something about having a cool spirit. Even if you're a, a hothead, even if you, you, like I knew a guy that was a prize fighter and uh, Archie Moore, he, I he heard him spoke, uh, speak. He lived in the same city as me, San Diego, California. He came to our Boy Scout troop and he said some amazing things like don't resolve conflict by physical violence. Well, he was famous for being physical with his fists. He said, when you're in a prize fight, the worst thing that you, can happen to you is you get you yield to provocation and you start to get angry, and then you start fighting out of anger instead of out of the discipline of the of the of the skill of the of the sport. I I, I couldn't wrap my head around that. I was a little skinny little kid, and I was like, "You're, you're." I thought the only time you fought was when you're angry, you know, <laughs> but. If we can maintain a gentleness and a cool spirit, I've learned this in my marriage, um, in my interaction with my mate, you know, when uh, one or both of us is upset and we're tired or stressed out or various things, or th things are circumstances are bearing down on us, the conditions can be just right to go from zero to 60 in volatility. And it's like, I, I, and I yielded to that many times, you know, I, I'm happy to say I'm growing, and I learned that that doesn't pay off. The anger of man does not work the righteousness of God. So with disciplining our children, with interacting at work, with even road stuff and people flipping you off and mouthing bad words at you or something, man, look, if you cut them off or you you endanger them, you, you like just own up to it and say, sorry, man. Sometimes they'll receive it, sometimes they won't. And, and even if you're not, even if you're totally innocent and they're just aggressive and weird, then there's a power in maintaining a cool spirit. Um, <laughs> I mean, this can abate riot. This can abate strife. There's a real power. He says, Be, blessed are the gentle for they shall inherit the earth. So there's a lot to this. And I trust you'll do more of a study on it. But man, I want to encourage you today, go into a situation and, and maintain a cool, calm, and collected spirit. God bless you.